Today we're going to talk about something that's very important in barbell training, and it has to do with how to safely train, particularly when it comes to your spine. So a lot of our instruction and a lot of our cues are around putting your back in what we like to call rigid extension. So what I want to talk through today is the different parts of your spine, what extension versus flexion is, what's overextension, and really come to some clarity on what's the safest way for you to train with the barbell on your back uh, or with the barbell on your hands for your back. So when I say extension, we're talking about a movement of a joint. So when a joint opens, that's extension. And when we talk about that with your spine, extension means like you're sticking your chest out. Show me what extension looks like. So this part of Andrew is getting shorter, while this part, so maybe like from his breastbone to his uh, belly button, that length is increasing. So when he's in extension, here to here gets shorter, while here to here gets longer. Now on the flip side would be flexion. So if Andrew puts his back into flexion, now we see this distance shorten and we see this distance lengthen, okay? You can relax you really don't wanna be in full extension or full flexion. Really, you don't wanna be at one end of the spectrum in any of the lifts. The only one where you can go into um, a larger amount of extension is the bench press because you're not actually supporting any weight on your back. So it's in the bench press that you actually go into what I would say is overextension. Overextension is different than hyperextension. Hyperextension is the kind where you get hurt. <laughs> Um, so, we'll look at the back, we kind of separate it into three big chunks, right? So up here we have um, your cervical spine. So if he's in flexion in his cervical spine, his chin is to his chest, right? If he's in extension, he's looking up, right? Then another area that we see some things come to play here with flexion and extension, especially in the squat, is your thoracic spine. So right up here, kind of across your shoulders. So if he goes into flexion, kind of hunched over, you can see kind of starts to look like a shelf here. And we'll see that on squats. And what we try to do to prevent that on squats is have you stick your chest out, right? Then he's gonna try and squeeze his shoulder blades together. So now he's creating a shelf with his musculature versus creating a shelf by making a table by being in flexion, okay? Now we're gonna move down more towards his lumbar. Now some people have what might look like really pronounced extension, more, a more pronounced lordotic curve. Andrew was kind of in that category here, like his butt looks like it sticks out a whole bunch. Not super common in men, um, Andrew's special. So and he, when he's in a lot of extension in his lower back, show me what that looks like. Yeah, he's like really popping this out, right? You could actually rest something on here, that's a lot of extension. <laughs> now when he goes into flexion, that really flattens out. And he's doing that by rotating his pelvis one way or the other. So now he has a posterior tilt, and then go ahead and relax, and go into an anterior tilt, where it's like if his pelvis was a bucket of water, he's tipping the water forward, right? Thank you, you can relax. So the tricky thing when we're lifting and trying to find a happy medium is that we tend to, or what I tend to see is someone will overdo one area and not get enough out of another area. And what you're trying to do is balance the amount of extension um, with not very much flexion. It's more about engaging the musculature that creates extension and engaging the musculature that creates flexion to a point where it's really balanced on either side. So your spine isn't gonna be compromised by being too much one way or the other. So let's talk about how we do that. So when you're actually performing the lifts, you're not just standing out here in space, not moving around, you're actually leaning over, bending down to pick something up, um, loading the back segment. So while it's easy to establish extension here, what we'll see when it goes wrong is you end up in this uh, position here where nothing looks too curvy, but when you start moving, we'll see one area go the other way. We'll see like uh, the, the lower back here go into flexion. So if you've properly established rigid, ex rigid extension, your back shape will not change throughout a lift. Like in a squat, we're not gonna see your upper back round, we're not gonna see your butt tuck under you. It's gonna stay the same. 
Same thing on a deadlift. So when you start pulling, you have one shape of your back and that shape stays the same throughout the whole lift. So establishing that is kind of tricky. So we're gonna walk through the three different segments here to help you kind of cue um, yourself into extension. Now for cervical extension, this one tends to be pretty easy. You end up being in a pretty neutral position and that's easy to tell based off of where your chin is and where you're looking. So if you look up, you totally go into cervical extension here. Too much extension, right? So where you set your gaze is going to dictate the amount of extension that you have here in your neck. So when you're squatting, you'll end up looking downward. Same thing when you're deadlifting, you'll end up looking downward. So a good proxy for you is where your gaze is, right? So if it's on the floor, your neck is probably gonna be in a good amount of extension. As we move lower, it gets a little more difficult, right? The thoracic back, the upper back, is still easier to set relative to the lumbar, but like I mentioned earlier, you can still get a little bit rounded. So yeah, not, not like that. So what you can see here is when Andrew's kind of neutral, this looks rather flat, right? And that's gonna be a little bit different based off of how much uh, kyphosis someone might have or how developed their musculature is. But if he uh, goes into thoracic extension, notice what happens with his chest here. Right, so if you relax again, watch my hand extension, my hand elevates a little bit. And you can even practice that on yourself by placing your hand on your chest and just trying to move your hand upward with your chest, right? You'll feel these muscles shorten, right? And that's different than squeezing your shoulder blades together, right? That scapular retraction, that might come with some extension, but it's not coming from where we want it. It's not coming from the muscles that actually manipulate the movement of your spine, right? We'll probably never have you do anything where you have to put yourself in thoracic flexion. <laughs> now, as we get lower down here towards the lumbar, something you can look for if you watch your own videos or as we watch our videos, is how many wrinkles you form in your shirt, right? And I'd actually like to show you what this looks like on a deadlift. Okay, so Andrew's gonna go through our little deadlift setup here, go ahead and reach down for the bar. He's gonna get his grip and his shins. Now watch as you can see that his shirt, it's really taut, it's stretched out across his back here. Now when he goes to squeeze his chest up, you can see how this shortens and you have all these wrinkles now, right? That's an excellent way to tell that you are in extension if you're watching something or if you're a coach and you're watching your lifter. And you can even as a lifter imagine that, right? You can relax because this area, this low back area tends to be rather difficult to feel. It's a tough area to cue, but if you imagine trying to make a lot of wrinkles, then you'll probably contract your erectors here and put yourself in lumbar extension. Another way to think about this is trying to get your bra line in the back closer to the waistband of your pants, right? Really all we're trying to do here is make one, make one area longer and another area shorter. Another way that you can actually learn how to do this is by making yourself feel it through a drill um, called like the Superman drill. All right, and he's gonna extend his arms out overhead. So for the first one, we're gonna have you feel what thoracic extension is by just raising your arms off the floor. Like you're trying to get your chest off the floor, good. So that gets you even down through your mid back, but it's largely up here on the top of your back. Go ahead and relax. And now can you just raise your legs off the floor? Yeah, so squeeze his butt, this gets tighter. Now raise your arms too. Good, so now he's in a whole bunch of extension all throughout his spine here, even his cervical spine just a little bit. Go ahead and relax. Good, that's gonna be more extension than you should be in when you're squatting or when you're deadlifting, but it does help you feel those muscles and what it should feel like when you're actually performing the lift, right? He's not gonna be in a big Superman position with the long belly and the short back when he's actually lifting, that would be too much. And if something starts by being too much in one area, it's gonna swing into being too much in another area when you're actually lifting. What that looks like is someone who starts their squat really extended, they're not gonna be able to hold on to this. So on the way down, they're actually gonna to start to round. It's too much. Let's go through this once more on the deadlift to help us see it in a context where it's actually on the bar and broken up into those three chunks again. So Andrew, go ahead and approach the bar again, please. Now he's gonna set up with something not really pleasant to look at. He's gonna end up, or he's gonna start here 
with a lot of flexion here. And what we see more often in the cervical spine and deadlifts is someone looking out too far ahead. So we end up in some overextension here in the neck, right? Um, and something that's really interesting about flexion and extension, you can head, you can rest for a second here. It's like it's like you're you only have so much extension for your back, and I kind of imagine it like having like something like butter on bread. You have to evenly spread it out. You can't just have all your extension up here in your thoracic, or you can't have all of your extension down here in your lumbar. You have to evenly spread it out across your, your back, but you only kind of have a certain amount, right? So we're trying to equally distribute that extension across your whole spine. So if you go back down here to your deadlift, in that example, you were just performing with a lot of extension here. It's like this is hogging all the extension when you need to spread it out a bit. So first things first, let's actually um, bring your chin down a little bit, look a little bit lower, good. And then I wanna see you get into thoracic extension. See if you can, yeah, you're gonna save a little bit here. But already we can see the wrinkles start to form here across his upper back. And then as he goes into lumbar extension, kind of moves his thighs out of the way. Lots and lots of wrinkles here. Like he, if he was wearing his belt, he'd be trying to get his waistband here really close to his belt, right? So this shortened, the front probably got a little bit longer, but not so much that this is entirely relaxed. And what gets very important, and we see it a lot with the timing at which we kind of check things off the list on our setup, is taking a breath, right? So if you take a big breath, like you're supposed to do when you get ready to lift, that really changes the shape, right? It changes how much extension you have in certain places, but you can't let your breath disrupt your extension, right? It has to reinforce it. So when you take your breath, take your breath before you finish your final squeeze. Right? Just like when you're in a squat, you take a breath, let everything settle in, and then you move. Right? So in a deadlift, you're going to breathe kind of right before that final chest up squeeze. Right? So he's breathing, then he seals it all in, and you can press the floor away, drag the bar, and then right back down. So he did it so well that we didn't see him round his back when he took his breath. Right? It wasn't getting really tight or he didn't get really tight and then take a breath and lose everything, right? And then when he was moving the bar, the shape of his back stayed very consistent. So he was able to hold rigid extension while the bar was moving upward, which is exactly what you want. To learn more about how to lift safely with proper form, click the links up here.